Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I'm very excited to share with you a blockchain project that I think is currently super undervalued. TE Food is a very new coin on the market, it's only a couple of months old. However, it already has a working product with over 6,000 business customers, but for some reason it is only ranked 454 on the crypto charts with a very small market cap of only 12 million. Even new ICOs with no working products have a much higher cap than this. So I think this is a project with a potential 100x gain and I'll justify why in this video. To learn more about TE Food, keep watching this video. TE Food is a supply chain project for food. This means that from the producer to the wholesaler to the retailer and finally to the customer, you and me, they provide quality control and tracking the whole way. The tracking process is so complete that at the customer level, you and I could use an app on our phone to scan the barcode of the produce in the supermarket and see its entire history before we buy it. Food traceability is a fast-growing industry that is estimated to be worth over 15 billion by 2021. And already currently, TE Food is the world's biggest food traceability solution. Every year, 700 million people and 400,000 deaths are due to foodborne diseases. If a customer is or consumer is sick, there is no accountability for where in the supply chain did the food become contaminated. TE Food aims to provide the accountability. Furthermore, for the cost of product recall, supporting exports, etc., all of these result in high expenses for the supply industry, something which TE Food is using blockchain technology to solve. TE's food is currently a joint project between a 21-year-old Hungarian food company and a 2-year-old Vietnamese company. The leaders of the company have all over 20 years of experience in business and IT. This is why even though they are new on the blockchain scene, they already have over 6,000 business customers, they are tracking 12,000 pigs, 20,000 chickens and over 2.5 million eggs daily. One of the things that I like most about this project is the fact that they make their own hardware. They produce their own security seals, their own label stickers with QR codes, their own RFID tags, their own coded paper bags from recycled paper and TE food labels that customers can scan in the shops. Any one of you who have been following this channel will know that I'm absolutely huge on blockchain projects that make their own hardware. Making your own hardware makes your technology hard to replicate and secures your position in the relevant market. But it also means that the progress of the company is not restricted by the technology of other companies. So for example, if you were to use the RFID tags of other producers, it's probably a generic RFID chips, the kind that you would find in phones or other devices, and it may not be 100% workable with your technology. And also, if the other company suddenly decided to close down or to sell their RFID chip to another competitor, suddenly you have just lost your edge over the competition or worse still, your entire business has to come to an halt because of the limitations of the other company. So I'm a huge fan of blockchain projects that have hardware and more so the ones that create and use their own hardware. And there's not many of them out there. And I've made it my own personal goal to try and invest in every blockchain project with hardware. In addition to producing their own hardware, TE Food has also, number one, a multilingual mobile admin app. This is an admin app that uh, is optimized for low-end phones that farmers can use, and it deals with logistic transactions, identity tool management, etc. They also have a digital signage for retailers to display traceability information. A B2C consumer mobile app, this is the app that I mentioned before, that you and I as consumers can use to scan the QR code of the product in the store and check the product history before purchasing it. And finally, currently they have a farm management tool app up as well. Some of the future technology that TE Food plans to release in the next 12 to 24 months includes, firstly, a livestock registry. So currently, TE Food is already partnered with the Vietnamese government in a pilot project that's called the National Livestock Registry to create a database of livestock that will not only allow monitoring of livestock but will also be extended with AI for forecasting and alarming modules. The next 
technology that they are hoping to pump out in the next 12 months is their own food safety sensor tool. So this is a hardware that can be built into transportation vehicles as well as transportation boxes to measure things like the temperature, humidity, etc. to ensure that appropriate transporting conditions have been met. They already have a prototype as shown in the picture above. Another very exciting novel technology that they are developing is animal facial recognition. This technology will eliminate the use for any physical text like RFID tags, which is a continuous cost for farmers. It is also currently in development with the Meat and Livestock Australia to take it as identifying kettles from just digital photos. So this project TE Food has so much happening already and there is so much more to look forward to. I think the potential of TE Food is simply massive. Now let's take a look at their ecosystem to get an idea of where the blockchain fits in the picture. For the project, blockchain basically does everything from ID management to traceability and quality control to alerting and reporting. Only the interface, the app, okay, the third party applications are done separately. Now, the blockchain technology isn't actually described in detail in their white paper. What is shown is just an overview of the blockchain architecture. I'll take you through it and it's quite simple. TE Food will run on two separate blockchains, one public and one private. The public blockchain they use is Ethereum and this is the system that will use the TFD token, which is the native token that you can buy on the exchanges. And the TFD token will run the entire economy. So every movement of information, uh, every value exchange, every transaction uh, will be using the TFD token. There will also be an internal reputation system that will help supply chain participants to rate the connected suppliers. The private blockchain will be used for storage of transaction and food related information, which means that they are not storing the information on the Ethereum blockchain, which would slow down the whole system because uh, Ethereum isn't a very fast blockchain, but they are going to store the, the information on a separate sidechain. The sidechain will also be driven by an internal token, but this internal token is not the TFT token. They're going to have a separate internal technical token that's called a transaction token. At this point in time, no more information is available about the second token, and the second token is also not available for purchases on the exchanges. I assume that it's an internal currency for running the system in a closed loop, and it's not an investment for token investors. So the currency we are interested in is the TFD token used on the public chain. Now coming to the TFD token, as token investors, I always say that what we want to know is that there is a use case and a demand for the currency because that is what will make the token a good investment. In this case, you can rest assured that there is a lot of token use as you can see above. Basically, the entire economy runs on this token. Firstly, to even use the ledger, the, the, the source of information, you have to pay for transactions of information using TFD tokens. Very much like the way Ethereum users have to pay for gas simply to transfer Ether. So any movement of information will generate TFD token use. Secondly, supply chain companies can also pay TFD tokens directly to each other for information. Thirdly, consumers will be rewarded with TFD tokens for using the consumer mobile apps in store as this incentivizes conscious consumer behavior. So it actually encourages you to use that technology to check that the product is a good value product. Consumers can also use the tokens to order food analysis services. So if you were to buy some random food that wasn't from the TE food supply chain, you can send a part of that food to the TE food company who will analyze and then send you back an electronic report of the food. In an increasingly health conscious society like this, like ours, this is potentially going to be very huge, especially in developed countries. So this is the project that I think has great use case, a great working product, as well as great token use. These are some of their current customers. You will only recognize these names if you're from Asia or Hungary. And from Asia, I do find some of these names familiar. Satra Foods, City Mart, Aeon, etc. These are companies that are quite big names in the Asian industry. 
As mentioned before, TE Food is currently the world's biggest food traceability solution already, and recently they have also been utilized or signed a partnership with Halal Trail, a company that tracks chicken and lambs from farm to table through the entire Halal food chain. This is potentially huge. Because out of the 7 billion uh, people in the world currently, 2 billion, almost one third are Muslims and seek only halal food. And halal food, as you are aware, is a market that is very conscientious about the way the food has been processed. So food traceability is a huge aspect of halal food. According to industry's estimation, the global halal food market will reach USD 2.5 trillion by 2024. And the uh, tea food has got its foot, okay, a foothold into the entire halal food market already. So the more I read about this project, the more I like it. I think tea food is really a very hidden gem on the market at the moment. This is their team. It's a very big team, as you can see. And even from the profile pictures, you can tell that it's a more mature age group, uh, group compared to a lot of the younger teams that we see in the newer blockchain projects. We'll go through a couple of these guys. They have two CEOs. The first CEO is Dr. Trang Dao Hao, and he is the president of the High Tech Association of HCMC with over 20 years of experience in strategic leadership, marketing and sales experience in both Asia as well as Europe. The other CEO is Eric Arokzo Zalasi, who is the previous co-founder and leader of two separate corporate IT development companies in Hungary, Urbe as well as Flexis. He has 23 years of leadership in IT project management. And you can go through the rest of the team's resume yourself, but I will summarize it as an impressive team with many resumes involving the big four companies like Ernst and Young and more. There are also Fortune 500 companies experience, many years of experience, and just generally a very wide range of backgrounds and successful careers. It's a team that inspires confidence. They have two advisors. Andre Jogobi, who is the CEO of Intercricket and the co-founder of Blockchain Competency Center. So he's probably the guy that brings the blockchain experience to the project. And there is Dr. Michael Patching, who has 13 years experience as a large animal veterinarian. And he's the current Vietnam Livestock Service Manager for Meat and Livestock Australia. TE Food also has a number of partners. Partners is different from customers. Partners work with them, while customers are the people that they serve. Their current partners include GSI, GSI or GS1. GS1 is an organization that develops and maintains global standards for business communication. And GS1 barcodes are scanned more than 6 billion times every day. So it's a very huge business. Another one of their partners is Telenorma, who is a German retail provider, and they will be implementing TE Foods traceability solution in Germany for retail companies. So not food companies, but retail companies. So potentially TE Food could be stepping into the arena of the retail supply chain to compete with other blockchain projects like Walton Chain and VeChain. And you can go through the rest of the companies yourself, the partners, but they are quite spread out across the world, from West Africa to Switzerland to South Korea and more. So I think that this project currently already has very good potential international partnerships and links, as well as a very high potential for global market penetration. This is the roadmap for TE Food, okay? or rather this is part of their roadmap. The actual roadmap goes a lot uh, longer. Uh, as you can see, okay, there's a lot to look out for. This quarter, we will see cattle and fruit and vegetables tracking launch. Uh, it will also see TE Food officers established in two more target countries to be reviewed. The next quarter, third quarter, we will see blockchain as a traceability ledger implemented into TE Food as well as fish and seafood tracking will be launched. In the fourth quarter, we will see the marketplace launch, and in the first quarter of 2019, we will see food safety sensor tools, as well as farm management tools ready. The second quarter of next year is when we will see animal face recognition, as well as they will be opening new offices for market presence in up to four countries. So definitely a very busy 12 months ahead. And this is a good and clear roadmap, which up to this point in time, the team has been very timely in achieving the milestones. Finally, let's round up with a price prediction. When TE Food first opened on the markets at the end of February, they opened at 2.7 cents. 
Currently, they are sitting at 2.4 cents. So they have actually fallen below their opening price. I think the reason for this is a combination of firstly, they launch in one of the worst bear markets that the crypto world has ever seen. And the second is that they are very under-recognized. They could be under-recognized for a couple of reasons. The first maybe is that their name TE Food isn't very catchy. It's not sexy and attractive as a brand like VeChain, for example. And so far, TE Food as a um, project, they haven't been marketing in the blockchain world that heavily. They've been marketing outside of the blockchain world, making partnerships with um, real companies involved in their industry, but they haven't been doing much marketing in the blockchain world. We haven't seen many airdrops or any bounty campaigns come out for them. So I think that's one of the reasons why TE Food is so undervalued. Now, their current market cap, okay, as I mentioned before, is only 12 million. That's very, very, very small for a blockchain project. They are ranked 454 on CoinMarketCap's ranking. That's, that's crazy small. Now, supply chain is one of the fastest growing blockchain industries. So far, the two most notable projects that we know are Walton Chain and VeChain. And both of these projects are focused on the retail industry. So that's where the attention is at the moment. T Food, okay, is basically the, the VeChain or Walton Chain six months ago. Getting into now is like getting into VeChain uh, back in September. Okay, in September of last year, VeChain was sitting around 20 cents, and now VeChain is sitting at $3.50. As a project, okay, for supply chain uh, blockchain project, VeChain has a market cap right now of $1.9 billion. Okay, TE Food has a market cap of only $12 million. So literally, VeChain is over 150x TE Food's current market cap. This is not 10x, guys. This is not 100x. This is 150x. Okay, so if um, TE Food ever went anywhere close to that arena where VeChain is at the moment, which I don't see why it can't because his technology and his partnerships is uh, already very massive, the potential gains for this project is simply mind-blowing for me when I think about it. Now, the reason why we don't often talk about very, very small projects is because small projects, okay, anything out of the top 100 in crypto charts, represent a significant increase in risk because the chance of a project actually collapsing and not making it is very high. You've got to remember that in 2017, 70% of ICOs have collapsed and just basically disappeared. Okay, They disintegrated. People who invested their money in those projects will never get their money back. So the smaller the project, the higher the chance of completely losing all your money because the project might just, just fall and disappear. But here with TE Food, okay, it's a project that is not just in... The, uh, out of the 100 it's not just 100 to 200 it's not just over 200 it's over 450 in the ranking it's super small but yet it's not going to collapse because it has government partnership it has over 6,000 customers it's making its own hardware it has a working product it has first movers advantage as a blockchain project and currently it is already the world's biggest food traceability solution even if you took it out of the blockchain scene as a project in itself it is not going to fall so you know having gone through the entire profile you know, um, i just don't see this company shutting down that means the only direction it can go is upwards so i think that this is a project that is potentially going to offer pretty mind-blowingly big uh, returns. Now, a lot of people on YouTube put shilling videos out there, you know, 100 times return, 100x return, rah, rah, rah. If you guys have been following our channel, you know that we don't do that. But I honestly feel it is very possible that TE Food could 100x within the next few years. So that's my take on TE Food, guys. Okay, I just want to say a very big thanks to our members on Telegram chat who brought this project to my attention. It's a super fine guy. So thank you so much for pointing it out to us. None of the above that I have said is professional advice. It's all my own personal opinion and I'm only human and I could be wrong. So please be sure to always do your own homework and make your own decisions. Thank you very much for joining us. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of TE Food. And if you would like to support us as a channel, then do give us that like and subscribe. And there is also a donation link in the description box below. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. Have a great Sunday wherever you are. And I'll catch you guys again very, very soon.